Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how you can build an AI competitor researcher system here on NNN, which is gonna be using perplexity to look up all of your closest competitors. It will then store those competitors within a Google Sheet. And after it is stored and researched all of your competitors, it is then going to send you an email report letting you know of all of the differences and any recommendations on how you can beat your competitors. Since all of your competitors will be stored in a Google Sheet, this system can be ran multiple times over and it will have complete context as to all of the competitors stored in the Google Sheet, which means that every time you run the system, it's gonna be looking for new competitors. And so this is a system that we can set to run every week or every day, and it will provide us a report on the latest competitors that it finds and how we can beat them. In summary, this is a multi-agent system which can run on its own whenever, and you're gonna get updated via an email. You don't have to look at this system when it's running at all. But if you don't wanna spend all the time learning this template and building it out yourself, I will have this template available for free to download within my school community. We've got over 18,000 members now. We've got 50 plus other AI agent templates and courses just like this. Once again, it's completely free to join and I've got it linked down. All right, so jumping into NNN, this is the entire workflow and agent setup that we've got in order to do our competitor research, to store it in Google Sheets, as well as generate a nicely looking report that gets sent to us whenever we want, giving us some insights into those competitors. Overall, this system is actually pretty simple and pretty straightforward on how to get set up. To give you a complete understanding as to exactly how it works, I'm gonna do a walkthrough from top to bottom as to exactly how everything works and why we have every step that we do. Before I jump into that, I'm gonna give you a live demo of the system working in action. So to showcase this system, all I need to do is hit the execute workflow button at the bottom here. And just for more context, I have already configured this particular system to think of itself uh, as a McDonald's researcher. So we are essentially running the McDonald's company and we're looking for competitors uh, that are out there. And we will ultimately end up with a report on the competitors of McDonald's and how we can beat them. So I'll hit execute workflow at the bottom here. It is going to run through our workflow and you can see it in action right now. If I jump over to my Google sheet, we're gonna see some competitors start to pop up right here. But we obviously have to wait for that to happen in our agent step. It is going to be processing and going through a bunch of research. We're using perplexity to do that research and I'll run through a little bit about how that works and why we're using it in a minute. Uh, but this is just doing a bit of a thinking process. It does take a little bit of time to do this. Uh, but obviously the idea is to have this run in the background whenever uh, and you don't have to watch it happen. And here we go. We've got a few competitors that have just popped up with Chipotle, Whataburger, Starbucks. I've honestly actually haven't heard of a lot of these because I'm not in the US, uh, although these are some competitors, it seems, to McDonald's. Uh, we could get some descriptions here as well to, to back that up. Uh, it's really looking for fast food companies, which it looks like it has done a good job of. And here is our competitive intelligence report for McDonald's. We got some information on here, uh, all to do with some of the brands that are just researched and some action plans to put us ahead of those competitors. And we can see here, gap analysis. These are some opportunities for McDonald's. Strategic recommendations, innovate the menu with healthier options, enhance the mobile apps functionality, uh, and invest in sustainable initiatives. So these are some things that it thought McDonald's maybe doesn't do as good as some of the others. And if we have a look at those competitors, you know, maybe these are some that, that do do that. We can see here, Panera Bread is a bakery chain focusing on healthier food. And so maybe that's where it sort of picked up on the healthier aspect of it as a competitor. And now it's recommending that that is something that McDonald's should focus on. Hopefully it now makes sense as to exactly what this system is used for and how you can start to integrate this into your own business and your workflows. Jumping in to the first node and module that we have at the start of this system is a schedule tool. So this schedule is just determining when should we trigger the, the workflow here. And this is set to trigger uh, once every Monday at 9 a.m. So essentially once a week on Monday at 9 a.m. this system is going to run. It's pretty straightforward as to how to set this up. Although once again, making sure you just need to add it by clicking the plus button, typing in schedule and then seeing schedule trigger. And that is exactly what this is. And then we can just set this up pretty straightforward. You just click on this trigger interval. It can either be weeks, days, hours, minutes, months, whatever. You can do it very custom as to how often you wanna receive these emails, uh, depending on your market as well, how competitive it is and how many competitors you're likely to have. Uh, you can configure this however. And then for setting the actual time, super easy as well. You just select the actual hour that you want it to run at, as well as the minutes, you can do that as well. Uh, but very, very simple. 
Right after this, we've got this workflow configuration, and this is just setting a series of variables that we wanna reference later in our agent steps regarding the company that we own and the company that we wanna do our research against. So for example, I just ran that test for McDonald's and we can see here I have populated the company name for McDonald's, the company website for McDonald's, industry as fast food and the target market as a younger audience. So those values were used from our AI agent to obviously look up the McDonald's competitors. So this is where you're gonna jump in and just add in your company or your branding or whatever you wanna put in there. And it is going to do the research uh, against this. You just click on the plus button up here and just type set. So this is the edit fields set module and you can see here to modify, add or remove item fields. So each of these are individual item fields and we're just referencing them later in the workflow here. So just type in set, grab the set module right here. You can click on add a field and you're gonna get the two values with the name and the value. And you can name these whatever you'd like. You can add more or less, whatever. Uh, you don't have to have it exactly how I have it. So you can type in obviously the company name here. And then you can just click on add field for each individual value that you wanna have. And this isn't 100% necessary. You could just add your company information directly into your AI agent step here. Although it does make it a little bit easier if you are gonna be referencing these values in other workflows and steps and tools. That means you just don't have to write all of that information again. Next up, we're gonna be jumping into Google Sheets and what this is going to be doing is getting all of those competitors that are currently stored in the sheet. And so if I jump into this module right here, you will need to authenticate your Google account and connect the specific Google Sheet that you're gonna be referencing. There are some other pretty good videos on how to actually connect and authenticate your Google account with NADN out there. So if you haven't done that yet, definitely check those out first. But once that is done, you will be able to select your sheet from the list. So if I click on this, it'll be a drop down with all of my spreadsheets within my Google account, and I can just select the one I'm looking for. And then below this, we've got sheet one, which is the specific sheet that is on the Google Sheet document here. Uh, and so you can see at the bottom, sheet one, and that's what we're referencing. Once that's done, as long as the operation is set to get rows, it will pretty much go through and get every row from the spreadsheet that is currently in there. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we can feed that data into our agent so it has complete context as to all of the competitors that we've already looked at before. And this just ensures that we aren't looking at or researching the exact same competitors every week. If they're the most popular ones, it's likely that they're gonna be the ones that are you know, populating at the top of the search every time. As for setting up the Google Sheet, these are just some of the headings I've added. You can make this whatever you want, of course. It doesn't have to be specifically this, but I've added in a competitor name website URL, description, products and services, company size, differentiators, as well as the date added and last check dates. Ultimately, I wouldn't stress too much about what values are being populated here. This is something that the AI is just going to do itself. So we don't have to do a whole lot of work as to how to send information into each of these fields. If you wanted to create a fully custom one, you could very easily do that as well. If you wanted to pick out a specific thing about a company, maybe about you know the types of food, we could have a category specifically for that. Once we've got all of those competitors and all of the data relating to them, we'll jump into the main AI agent step, which is gonna be used to find those competitors and do the research on them. Jumping in to this AI agent step, and if I have a look at our main prompt here, you'll see that this is the entire prompt that we're using to look up all of our competitors to actually give it some context about the competitors that we already have. And this agent is also gonna be populating our Google sheet. It's gonna be using perplexity. And it's gonna determine when the research is done and when to move on to the next agent to then generate that report. This prompt has been formatted in a specific way to just go through the main areas that we need in order to start off with our research and then end up with a really nicely formatted Google Sheet, of course, with all of our spreadsheet data. Uh, and we are referencing all of the tools that we have connected to this as well. So just very briefly, we've got a few tools here. We've got our Google Sheets tool, and that's what we're using to send off the data to Google Sheets very easily. We've got our Plexity Research Tool, which is what we're using to actually look up uh, the, the latest competitors, the latest news in the market to see you know, what's going on. This is connected directly to a real search engine. So this isn't random large language model data that has been trained on. This is actually looking up the latest information. Jumping back into our prompt, the top of the prompt here says, you are a competitive intelligence researcher. Your task is to find and analyze 10 competitors for the company provided in the input data. So I have specifically told it to only look and analyze 10 competitors. The reason for this is that if we didn't give it a set amount of competitors, it would kind of get stuck in a loop where it would just be continuously researching and finding new competitors. 
could be useful for other use cases if you want it to just be continuously running and finding new competitors and going as super deep as you possibly would want to. There's definitely a use case there, but for the purpose of generating a quick weekly report, setting a limit is a little bit easier. But otherwise we've got company details and I've got the name, website, industry, and target market. And you can see we've added in these variables here and these are coming directly from our set fields. So if I have a look on the left here, Workflow configuration, I do need to execute the previous node to actually see all of those values pop up. Uh, but otherwise, once they have popped up, you will be able to just drag and drop that variable and reference that data in a prompt. Next, we've got your objectives. So number one, use the perplexity tool to research and find competitors in the same industry and target market. Identify at least five to 10 direct competitors. And for each competitor, gather their company name, website URL, description, key products and services, and then just the other values that are within our Google Sheet. And then store each of those competitors in the Google Sheet using the Google Sheets tool with the following columns. And I've added in all of the columns that we've had in our Google Sheet here. So it knows exactly what information it needs and where to populate it. And then number five, once again, please only store 10 competitors in the sheet. Sometimes it might do less than 10, but we definitely don't want it to do any more than 10. And then provide a summary of competitors found and stored. You must ensure you do not have any duplicate competitors to the ones we already have stored. Here are the competitors we have on file. So this is actually being referenced from our Google Sheet Get All Competitors module that just ran. This is not just looking at the couple of variables coming in from our Google Sheet. This is essentially doing an array of all of the competitors. We don't wanna just run one at a time or else the system won't work. So this specific outline of the variable is looking at every single one. And then below this, please also refer to your memory to ensure the competitors you have just added in the same session are not added again, as you will not see these competitors above yet. So the reason for adding that part of the prompt is that when we're doing our research and we're adding new competitors to the sheet, those competitors aren't gonna be seen in this particular variable because that has already ran previously in the workflow. So we need to let it know that it is going to have to refer to the memory module on the AI agent to find those previous competitors so it doesn't reduplicate them. And for a little bit more context, you'll see we've got a simple memory from NNN connected. This is super easy to do. Just type in memory when you're actually on the memory module here and you'll see simple memory. Just click on this and it is pretty much gonna work right away. One thing to note is that you will be provided with a key. You will have to add a key. This key can be any value, any text value, number value, whatever. It's just sort of identifying the session. Now, if you're gonna be using this as an internal workflow, you're not gonna have multiple different sessions for different, you know, different reasons. You can just set whatever value here. You could just type whatever you want. It just needs to be a unique identifier for that memory session. And that's pretty much what's going to allow us to have that context as to the competitors we've already been looking at so that it doesn't start to throw in repeat competitors in this sheet. So that is it for the main prompt here for the AI agent step. We now have our tools. So for Google Sheets, of course, what we have is a, the Google Sheets connection. Once again, you can use the same connection as we did previously. This is going to be mainly used for the operation of creating new rows. So if I click into here, you'll see append row is related to create a new row in a sheet. Uh, and it does exactly what it says it does. We can then select our document, the specific sheet. And then what we've done is I've selected map each column manually. So we are setting the value ourselves for each of these uh, columns. And then I've used the NNN automatic AI filler tool, which essentially populates every field by itself. The AI agent is gonna be doing this, which is pretty awesome. Uh, functions have, and yeah, we don't have to do anything here. The competitor name, website URL, company size, all of this is gonna be populated and handled by our AI agent. One thing I forgot to show you on the AI agent here is that we actually have a max iterations option set here. So like I mentioned earlier, sometimes our AI agent gets a bit carried away with all of the different competitors for the particular industry that you're researching. And it kind of gets stuck in a loop of constantly hitting perplexity to find new competitors and add new competitors, which once again, could be great for some use cases where you want to have an agent constantly running in the background, finding new competitors. But for this case, we don't want it to do that. And we can set a hard stop by clicking in the options section at the bottom here, clicking add options and you'll see max iterations. I've already added it, so it's not in this list here. Although when you click on it, it will automatically populate right here. And I've just added in five, which means that our agent is only gonna be hit uh, individually five times. So it's likely that we can get more than five rows out of a single run, uh, although it will only actually use our agent five times. Next to the Google Sheets tool, we have of course our perplexity tool. And this is what we're using to do our main research. So we're not using the large language model to do the main research. 
We're using this perplexity tool. And the reason for that is that we wanna be using real search engine information pulled directly from actual website links and articles more up to date than something like a large language model, which is trained on information and we can't rely on that being nearly up to date. So to get perplexity up and running, you will need to add your perplexity account and API key to this module here. Of course, there are some other tutorials out there on how to do this. It's quite simple to sign up for a perplexity account, go over to the API settings, add in some credits, copy your API key, and then just jump into create new credential and just paste it right here and it will start working right away. Once that connection is all done, you don't really have to change too much here. The operation should be using message a model. There will be a text field. So that will then get automatically populated by the AI. <clears throat> I have added in a description below this as well. This description kind of just helps prompt exactly what will get sent off to the AI. And I've just said, please look for competitors other than the ones we already have found. You can populate the names here to get better results. And so this is just to help really reinforce not to find anybody that's similar that we found before and just to try find new competitors. Once that is set up, the AI agent here for finding competitors is pretty much good to go. I'm obviously using uh, this specific chat model with Open Router. If you're not familiar with Open Router, it's essentially one API that gives us access to a whole suite of other AI models. Pretty convenient to use, uh, but ultimately we're just using OpenAI's GPT 4.1 mini model in this case. Once we have found those competitors, it has obviously got context as to the competitors it's found. It has stored them in the spreadsheet here. We've then got another AI agent step, which is gonna be turning those competitors into some sort of a report that we can send off in an email with some action items as to how we can beat them. And so this right here is the prompt for generating the competitive report. And if I jump into the prompt, you are a competitive strategy analysis based on the competitor research data provided, create a comprehensive HTML report, analyzing how obviously the company name can beat these competitors. And we've added in the details once again, uh, of our company that we provided within the set fields. The competitor research summary is coming directly from the previous AI agent with, with all the information that it just found, of course. And then we've just got some pretty basic prompting for creating an HTML report. We can see here, create a detailed HTML report with the following sections, executive summary, competitive landscape, blah, blah, blah. Just a bunch of elements that are contributing to obviously a useful report uh, that is sort of actionable. Uh, for you know the next steps that we can take to differentiate ourselves and to beat those competitors. Obviously, you can do this however you want. You can customize it to be exactly how you would want it to be. And then below this, we've got use professional HTML formatting with modern design. And we've got some uh, elements here which just sort of contribute to crafting and styling our HTML email just a bit better. And that is it. We've now got our HTML code generating based on the competitors that are just researched. And then we're just jumping into a Gmail module right here, which is connected to my Google account through the same authentication as before. We can then send an email off to my email or whoever's email, obviously. And we've got a subject line related to the company name. And then we have a message. And this is the JSON output directly from this AI agent, which is all of that HTML code. And once that's triggered, this is exactly what we'll get. So we'll get a bunch of information related to all of the topics and sections that we wanted to add in here. Uh, and we've got some formatting and styling. I think it could be done quite a bit better. I think the prompt that I gave it was a bit rough and it wasn't good enough to, to really clearly format it in a way that looked nice. Although structurally it looks like it's done a good enough job here. Uh, and we can see what it's talking about. We've got our competitors here that it's had some research on. It's done some analysis. It's looked for some gaps. It's made some recommendations. It's made some market positioning recommendations as well. And so this is a very generalized example being in the fast food industry but for your specific business to throw all of the details and maybe elaborate uh, specifically to your niche and be a bit deeper as to what you're looking for, this can be a pretty epic system to send you an email every single week as to some of the competitors that may have popped up in the past week. And you're gonna be able to take some pretty solid action based on this. I've had a look at some of the statistics of my YouTube channel and I found out that 80% of people watching right now actually aren't subscribed. So chances are you're actually not subscribed right now. And if you could hit the subscribe button, that would mean a lot. If you could like the video as well, and if you see a hype button, click that one as well for whatever reason, it's a new feature and it really blows these videos up. Once again, if you do wanna get access to this template for completely free, you wanna download it and import it and don't have to do anything, you can join my free school community, which I'll have linked in the description. And if you wanna learn how to prompt an AI to build out these workflows so you don't have to do any of the manual work yourself, check out this video right here where I showcase Enadens brand new AI workflow builder.